Hello, hello, and welcome into the start of a brand new game in our A to V Deity Challenge. We have, are, of course, on Gandhi, Bapu himself, and we will have a shift in our typical strats today uh, because we'll be trying, keyword try, for a religious victory. And I have a lot to say about that, so this will probably be a bit of a longer part zero video, um, but we're going to talk about tech tree versus civ tree and you know, effective strats in going for religious victories and how it pertains to deity, things like that. Um, but first, we can start with uh, Gandhi's abilities. And his his unique passive, if you will, uh, gives him five faith for each Civ, including himself, that they have met and has founded a religion. So on a small map like we play, that's four other, that's four total religions. So that's 20 faith per turn, assuming people aren't warring. Um, that's a that's a bonus that kicks in fairly early in the game, um, so it's it's decent. Um, a lot of the religious champs, if you will, uh, or leaders have some way to generate extra faith, um, and this is his, and it's and it's one of the better ones. Um, Russia obviously have oh quickie, thank you. I wonder if I get a notification if if you donated, dude. You're the first one to donate. Sorry to derail the uh, vid, vid, but. Uh... We were talking about bandwidth issues and and Quickies being a generous, generous person. I want to see if that pops up for me or if I have to go find it. Um, anywho, first of all, thank you so much. I'll go figure out. It should pop up, honestly, but we'll see. Anyways, sorry. <clears throat> I digress. Um, so this is his ability. It's pretty good. It kicks in early. Um, we like this. You like Spain for a religious victory and deity? We, we can talk about, we're, we're going to talk a lot about the religion here before we even press the start button. Um, so uh, Dharma is, isn't is bad. Um, so it receives follower belief bonuses in a city that from each religion that has at least one follower. So it's kind of, uh, thank you so much, Quickie. Thank you. Um, this is kind of hard to control. It's, it's, on its surface, has a, a lot of upside because having more follower bonuses uh, in your cities can give you something like Jesuit education. So you can all of a sudden start, start buying your science buildings. Um, but it's pretty difficult to control. I was thinking about it. I'm like, well, you could technically have a converted city that's producing apostles of, you know, Christianity if you're Buddhist and technically spread a little bit to each of your cities i don't know um but it's that it's a little bit wonky i think it's cool if if you get it to work out for you but there's a lot of randomness this is hard to control um the varu actually plays in well with gandhi uh because it's so early in the tree so it's a, it's a unique replacement for the horseman not only is it an elephant and looks awesome um, but adjacent enemy units receive minus five combat strength so if you if you get a couple of these and you start surrounding units, um, you can have a pretty healthy army um, because they won't be able to attack into you very well. We may, depending on how this start goes, we may wind up utilizing these and some archers for early war, um, but it's going to be hard to do everything. And we're, we're going to talk about that as we as we move on here. Let's finish off with the step well. Uh, unique tile improvement. I'm coming around a little bit on the unique tile improvements. Um, this is one that I don't mind um, because it gives you extra housing and it works in conjunction with your farms. So it's just kind of like a farm replacement. Um, and it also could possibly give you some extra faith, which I mean, one faith is kind of whatever. Uh, but the housing is nice. It allows you to go tall. As you guys know, I typically build fairly tall. Um, I typically target seven to 10 cities and they get to be big and tall and we like that. Um, so what... Um, Hey, Lone Wolf, how you doing? Um, issues with a religious-based victory is um, one on deity is getting a great profit. To, so actually founding a religion is a ginormous challenge. Um, Stonehenge is going to go around turn 20. So boom, there's a religion gone already. And then you've got five other or four other combatants for religions. Um, and it's usually the one of the AI's first moves is to get a holy site. Um, so getting a religion is going to be really, really, really tough. I like to build slingers into archers, into a settler. And then, you know, eventually we wind up getting like a campus district or something like that. But that's usually not to like turn 40, 50. And that's just 
far too late because not only do you need a holy site, but you need to generate the great person. So you either have to run the religious orders and that takes up your production, or you have to just get extremely lucky and have nobody else working on it. Um, yeah, build a holy site, build a shrine, and two holy prayers is a good way to get a religion. We're going to wind up doing something like that. The problem is we're going to be sitting there at around turn 60 with one city and a religion. Now, if you rush a campus, at least you have science. You know, rushing some extra faith isn't that great. Like, a campus will give you the great scientists, which are obviously more of, and, and science to progress, you know, technology. The faith is kind of a dead district until mid game when you start building a bunch of apostles and things. Um, so that gives you a really, really rough curve as you will. Um, it's, it's, it's really hard to take over your territory and get a religion and not get overwhelmed. Um, so that's where maybe the Varu can come into play. Like if we can rush out our religion, um, get some archers to defend ourselves and then rush some horsemen. Maybe we can combat somebody who's either take over a city state or, you know, take out our opponent, something like that. Um, but it's, it's going to be hard to do everything in, in Civ, you kind of, on deity, you, you need to specialize and that's not something that we're going to be able to do particularly well. We're going to specialize in faith, but at, we, we kind of need, you know, eight cities and a bunch of holy sites and mid game before that starts to matter. So it puts you behind in a lot, a lot of different ways. You're noticing that aggressive expansion is a good foothold. Absolutely. It's not just pissing them off. It's good to settle location. Yes, absolutely. Strategic location is a huge part of this game. Hopefully we get lucky and have Jerusalem. Jerusalem's a good one to get. Um, Yerevan is the best because you will get to pick your apostle promotions. And hopefully we'll get to see all that. If we can settle through the curve and make it into turns like 150, um, we should be able to win without too much of a problem. Sometimes they're real aggro with um, you run into a bunch of apostles and it's difficult to spread your religion. But in general, it's not too bad. Um, so the rest of it, we need to talk about in-game with the tech trees and such. Um, that is enough of looking at Gandhi's face. Uh, we're going to, as as usual, deity, standard speed, continents, small map. We are partial to balance start. Although that hasn't been, I don't know, it's been fine. I've liked our start positions most of the time. Most of the time. Hey, hey, Kyler, how you doing? From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Be kind, Gandibapu, and you will find yourself surrounded by true friends. Keep the Indian people safe, guarding them with magnificent elephant warriors. Your faith will guide you to peace and harmony. Keep your mind open and be the change you want to see in the world. Thanks, you, thanks, you guys. Yeah, one way that we could manipulate the religion uh, early is to pick our opponents and put Congo in the game because Congo can't found their own and that at least eliminates one. Um, another way to get a religion is just to really aggro rush your opponents, especially if you can grab one of their settlers um, and just aggro them down before they can get a religion, get a prophet, and then you, you kind of have uh, you have one yourself. But those are really specific. That's the, that's the problem with this is it's very RNG based. It's going to matter a lot about our, uh, it's going to matter, our, our, our opening territory is going to matter a lot. Um, and then just some luck. We need some luck at our, on our sides, so. Um, and I forgot to mention that uh, opposing civilizations receive double war wariness against us. So that, 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 that could be useful um, in some warring. But then it turns off your faith, your faith fountain. But whatever. Let's see what we rolled here. Huh. You guys know how I feel about non-river starts. Um, and this is no exception. It looks like we are on a bit of a smaller continent. I think if we move over here, we're not going to find uh, a river. Our best bet seems to be maybe explore this way. Um, <laughs> you don't get to pick your enemies in real life. Absolutely. True, true story. Yeah, I think, I mean, certainly we need to move here first, and then we can decide to go south or, uh, or west there. 
Yuck. I mean, this is a nice first tile. And so is this. So we might have to just live with our coastal start for once. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think needing a religion, you know, as much as I'd like to move and find a river, but having to get a religion, these are... That's a really nice productive tile, so maybe we can actually... So, one of the things I forgot to mention is that part of the reason it's really hard to get a religion on Gandhi is he doesn't have a unique holy site. Russia does, and Arabia gets a free whole great profit no matter what. So those are two viable religious victory uh, candidates. Um, and China can rush Stonehenge, so there's another one. But uh, it was it was Cleopatra that had the god spawn. It was pretty ridiculous. Um, but this tile array is pretty good, and maybe we can get the extra housing with our unique um, tile improvement. So we can get some step wells in here. Um, so yeah, I think we're just going to settle in place. It's not what I like, but it might actually be conducive to us getting a religion. So I think it's fine. Alrighty. And let's take, let's talk now uh, before we get too far into this. Um, do you want a river for the water bonus, or are there many re more reasons? Um, good question. So rivers are defensive because they can't, if you attack across a river, you get a, a penalty versus we're just on open terrain here. We're not even on a hill, so Delhi is very vulnerable um, right now. So a river is good for that. And then, yeah, mostly it's the population bonus. Um, I don't like the fact that we can only get four citizens here. Um, I would much prefer the extra, if you, here, we can, we can look at this real quick. Fresh water gives you plus three. Coastal water gives you plus one. So we're missing two housing capacity in Delhi right off the bat. And I don't like that. Um, but perhaps with the ivory, I mean, we've got some good growth here. Um, this is an excellent first tile to work because it'll give us some gold. We'll be able to produce things fairly quickly. Um, yeah, it's, it's in general not too bad. Now, we're really going to have to think about our opening array of, of production here going to vary a lot from what we typically do. Let's talk about um, religion and culture victories versus uh, science or domination victories. So having to spend your time in the culture tree, as I've mentioned before, hurts you uh, from a military standpoint, because while you get policies and stuff that might, might help you militarily, you don't get any actual units here. So we need to offset that somehow. We'll, we'll probably still need some campuses um, and we're probably going to stay, we'll, we'll get up to like something like mathematics so that we have the option for districts. And then we're going to have to stay probably in the bottom half of this tree, just so that we have military units that can fight against people, better walls, things like that. Um, aqueduct would be, would be decent with the mountain. Yeah, we may, we may wind up getting an aqueduct. Um, it's going to be just kind of all over the place. I'm not as rote with this type of victory strategy as I would be with a uh, science or military base. So we need to get astrology right away. Which is, of course, in this second... Did that say 72 turns? What the? That's not right. Are you guys seeing this? Can't be 72. These aren't 36. We need to rush to astrology. Uh, with all luck, we'll find a natural wonder. And we'll boost this. Because we just... We, like, the first thing we need to do is build this. And then we're going to come back around for some archery. And possibly go right into our Varu. Um, and just avoid all the rest of the stuff. Now, these are these are useful things. Finding iron, extra production, those those kinds of things are really really good. But um, yeah, I don't know. My speed is normal. I think standard speed. I don't know. It looks like a bug. Honestly, it looks like a bug. Um, so how do you win a religious victory? Step one is get a religion, and that's going to be challenging enough. Uh, Burton Law. Yeah, we won as Germany. Got to space pretty easily, pretty convincingly, actually. So you need to get through your opening text. This is one of the goofy, goofy things about early early trees. So how do you get a great profit? Well, you get great profit points. So, oh, let's rush to mysticism. Well, you can't use this until you have your next tier of government. So you have to go here and then backtrack. And why is this here? And that's there. I don't know. It's really all over the place. Um, the Greeks might be able to get a religion. We've talked, we've talked about this and playtested this a lot in the, in the channel. 
Um, Greeks might be able to get a religion if you rush mysticism and then just start running your great profit points. Um, it's an interesting theory. We haven't actually tried that one. So you need to get here to theology and then divine right and reform church. So you get your temples, you get your first religion and your second religion. You want to mostly save your apostles um, until you have reformed church. So reformed church is really good because you can buy combat units with faith. So that's not exactly what you want to be doing with your faith, but it might help you stay alive and staying alive is a good thing. Um, you also get some extra uh, strength in religious com combat, but mostly you want that discount on faith pur purchases. So 15% plus 1% for each whatever on standard, standard speed. So 15% discount, couple that with your apostle discount in your religion and your extra spreads with apostles, typically how I build my religion, you should have enough strength and spreads with your apostles to convert everybody uh, because the ultimate goal here is to convert all other uh, civilizations to your religion. Whew, okay. Um, is that enough? Did I cover everything? I think so. Lack of science keeps us keeps us vulnerable. Um, mostly we want to beeline reform church, so we won't get the extra trade routes from here, um, which kind of is anti-synergy with something like triangular trade. Um, but then you can get up to, oh, what is it? Where's the, uh, where's the holy site bonus? There you go. Yeah, so you just get to reform church. You, you turn on your extra faith you got an adjacency bonus up here. It's kind of it's kind of the general idea of it, but step one is getting a profit, and uh, we'll, we'll try to solve that on the next video. If you guys have questions, uh, just shoot them out in chat, and uh, we'll try to try to cover that. But I think this is long enough for a part zero video. So, thanks for watching.